Yo, yo. Slap on your gloves. Grab your tools of choice. Hey, meet me in your kitchen, y'all. Hey, I want to welcome you back to my channel. I am your man. Keep a cup can cook. Hey, today we're going to go through an old classical res uh, recipe today. A lot of people give meatloaf a bad rep, but hey, stay tuned into this recipe that I'm about to show you, I'm about to demonstrate to you, and I guarantee you it's going to change your perception on meatloaf. Hey, I got my skillet coming up to temp. We're going to be working with two pounds of this 80-20 ground beef, but I'm going to set this to the side for right now. Hey, all the ingredients and all the precise measurements will be listed in the description box below. It's just too many to have spread around here. So I'll go through them as I use them, yeah. So with my skillet in place, what I'm gonna do is go on here and get me some avocado oil, y'all. Only need like a tablespoon. Tablespoon of this avocado oil. As you can see before me, we got my bell peppers and my onions. We got a cup of onions and we got a quarter cup of each colored bell pepper. You already know me. I like to cook with color because I truly believe we eat with our eyes first. And the flavors that come from those, the sweet and all that. And come on, y'all. We putting flavor on top of flavor here, y'all. I believe, what, I got a medium high? Yeah, medium high temp. Looks like we up to temp. I'm gonna go ahead and start in with the onions first, y'all. Always like to give my onions a little bit of a head start. They seem to be the ones that take the longest to break down. I don't know why meatloaf was given a bad rep. I know sometimes it may look funny when it comes out of the oven, and I think that's what it is. It's the look of it in this loaf form that make people shy away from it. But hey, stick to this process, y'all, and I guarantee you, you'll be asking for more. I'm talking about a, a moist, and a juicy meatloaf, y'all. I like to hit it with a pinch of salt so it can release its flavor, its juices, all its waters. Then go ahead and put, add in your bell peppers, y'all. Get everything in the pot or in the pan. <coughs> now this step right here, sauteing the vegetables, hey, is totally optional. Now, I've done it both ways. I've seen it done both ways as well. But I like to do it this way because it gives the opportunity for the vegetables to release all this waters out. You know that water don't have no flavor, so why would we want to have that in our meatloaf? We want to put flavor in, we don't want to take flavor out. But yeah, you don't have to, it's strictly optional because 
the vegetables will get cooked inside the meatloaf. But I like to add a little bit of flavor to it by sauteing all these waters out. Why well, put that naked, bland water with no taste inside your meatloaf? And that's why I do it like this. I am your man. Keep a cup can cook. And we doing it today, y'all. That moist, juicy, and delicious meatloaf. those waters out. I hit it up with that salt. Now I'm going to hit it up with a little bit of AP season just to season up our veggies. And I'm going to hit it up with a little bit of a pinch of a tea, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. As I said, y'all, everything will be listed, precise measurements and all, in the description box below. Looking like our vegetables, they're softened up, they're seasoned up. Hey, we're going to move these to the side, let them cool down before we add them into that room temperature ground beef, y'all. Allow them to cool down a little bit. But while we're cooling it down, we're going to go ahead and make our topping for the meatloaf. When it's done, y'all. I'm gonna go in with a cup of barbecue sauce. I'm using Sweet Baby Ray's today, but hey, tomorrow may be something different. You wanna use a cup of your favorite barbecue sauce. You wanna use a cup of your good ketchup. We got that Heinz. I'd like to add a tablespoon of A1 steak sauce, y'all. Tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Couple dashes of this W sauce. We're gonna add a quarter cup, no, let's say three tablespoons. Brown sugar, light. And we're gonna get this mixed dip. Add a couple of tablespoons of this honey. A little all-purpose seasoning. A couple of tablespoons. A 
tablespoon of smoked paprika. Go ahead and get that a mix. Let those sugars dissolve. Let everything come together. And you have yourself a lovely, tasteful sauce to put over the top. Now, there's been times that I've done brown gravy, but I've been wanting to do this one today. Put my red sauce over it. Now, you can add a little bit of tomato sauce to this. Um, not tomato sauce, but tomato paste to thicken it up and redden it up just a little bit, but I decided not to. But once you get all them sugars and everything, Combine, you'll be able to feel it and hear them crystals moving around, y'all. Once everything is looking good, hey, you can go ahead and pull it off your heat, cover it up, set it to the side till you need it. Smelling good. I'm look. I'm smelling that strong flavor of that barbecue sauce and things of that nature y'all I can smell it if I haven't said already preheat your oven y'all I hear it over there clicking away 375 degrees Okay, cut my heat. This is no longer needed. You're just gonna cover this up and allow it to do its thing until we need it. Go ahead and push this off the camera. And we're gonna bring this ground beef into play. But that's the real star. That's the real star right there. I am your man, Keep a Cup Can Cook. And today, we doing it, y'all. Meatloaf. Classic comfort food, y'all. Veggies should be cool to the touch by now. We'll go ahead and add those in. That's right, y'all. Right tool for the job gets everything out. Nothing gets left behind. Nothing gets left behind. Go ahead and hit this up with the same seasoning, y'all. Smoked paprika. That's two pounds of meat right in there, so we gotta season this up. As I said, all the Pacific measurements will be in the description box below. Hit it up with some salt, just a dash. We're gonna wake it up, wake them flavors up. That's what that salt gonna do, y'all. I got this beefy onion soup mix. I'm gonna put one of the packets in, y'all. That's strictly optional. I just love it. Okay? That's how I do that. We 
We're going to get in there with our hands and begin to massage this all in. We want those veggies all over the place, y'all. So get in there. Don't be afraid to touch your meat. Every time you go into your meatloaf, you should see a vegetable in there. So get in there and really go in there and get this stuff incorporated. Get yourself a big enough bowl that you can go and toss it around, play around with it, y'all. Once you get it to where you, let me change this glove out. Matter of fact, I'm gonna change both these gloves on now. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of garlic. This is that roasted garlic, y'all. Yeah. Paste, roasted garlic paste. Tablespoon of that sour cream. That's gonna give it that creaminess, y'all. Gonna hit it up with some Italian seasoning. We're going in with that parsley. Freshly chopped. Slap on some more gloves. Cause we get ready to really get messy in here, y'all. We got that boards and cheese, y'all. Garlic and herb. Don't slip on it. Don't slip on it. In your specialty cheese aisle. Really brings a punch of flavor. We're gonna go ahead and get that broken up in there. Telling you, yeah, don't skip the process with that boards and cheese. Man, that cheese inside this meat mixture, the garlic and that herbs, man, really brings some flavor, packs some flavor, y'all. Go out there and get it. Keep a box or two in your refrigerator. They also got other flavors. I got them in my refrigerator now. Okay, with that, you wanna go ahead and get you two beaten eggs. Pour it to your mixture. Now we about to bring it all together, y'all. The egg gonna be a binder. Get this stuff all over my breadcrumb container, but we get ready to go in with breadcrumbs. Now you want to do this slowly. Now this is that plain breadcrumb, y'all. You can get Italian or whatever you get, whatever flavors they got. I just decided to do plain for this because I'm gonna use them for something else that I want to be playing. So, you gotta think ahead and when you cook. I can feel 
feel it taking form. I can feel it. That's the way you want it. This is also an excellent meatball mixture, y'all. If you want to do some meatballs, you can stop the process right here and form you up some meatballs. I believe I'm going to do it up with a little bit more and that's going to do it, y'all. Looking at the container, that's about two cups of breadcrumbs. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, if you could, if you could pick up your mi mixture like this, it's ready to go, y'all. But what we gonna do? I'm gonna clean up my workstation. I'm gonna put this mix meat mixture in the refrigerator, let it form up a little bit more while I, I clean my dishes in my workstation. Eight. Hey. I will be back. I am your man. Keep a cup can cook. And remember, preheat your oven 375 degrees. Hey, we'll be back. All right, y'all, I am back. Hey, got my meat mixture out the fridge. It has time to, to take form. That was about 10 minutes, y'all. Hey, now, it didn't get cold all the way through. We just wanted to form it, get it formed. And that's what we talking about, y'all. Now, this is how I like to do it. Go ahead and bring my meat mixture out. I got me some parchment paper laid here. And I'd like to go ahead and form it up with my hand. Now I know there are people out there that use the loaf pans. And I do too sometimes. Just depends on what's going on, how I want to do it. And I got me a pan with a rack on it because we're going to place it on this rack and place it into the 375 degree oven because we want the juice, all the oils and grease to drain off the meatloaf. We don't want it to be swimming in the fat. This is my meatloaf and I'm about to place it on my rack. We're gonna take it off the parking paper though. Should have did this a different way, but matter of fact, let's just go and pick it up. Let's do that. It's gonna hold its shape. If I can get my hand up under there without all, all this paper. This would do me like this while I'm on camera. If I wasn't on camera, I'd pick this thing up like it wasn't nothing, huh? That's the way it goes, though. That's the way it goes. Go ahead and get it reformed a little bit while it's on the rack. Sorry y'all for all of that, but hey, we cooking. Meatloaf is on our baking rack. We can ready to place it in a 375 degree oven. Hey, this is gonna take probably about 40 to 45 minutes, but in 30 minutes, we are gonna check it, 
we're going to baste it with our sauce that we made earlier and we're going to return it back into the oven i am your man keep a cup can cook hey we got this moist juicy and delicious meatloaf going in all right y'all i am back hey this is 20 minutes in this is how it's looking 375 degrees i'm gonna do my first basting of my sauce now just gonna give it a light little coat yeah we want that flavor to baste up in there Trust the process, y'all. Trust the process. That's all it takes, y'all. We're gonna stick it back in that 375 degree oven. I am your man, keep a cup, can cook. And we'll be back. All right, y'all, we 30 minutes in. We want to give this another coating. We want to give it another thought. Hey, this is going to be a little thicker coating. But if you can see how the grease is inside the pan because we got it sitting on that rack, we ain't got the meatloaf swimming and all that fat, y'all. And the aroma that's coming from this, oh my goodness. Oh yeah. All right y'all, 30 minutes in going back in that 375 degree oven. Hey, stay tuned. Hey y'all, I am your man, Keep a Cup Can Cook, and I am back. Hey, my house is smelling amazing. Hey, take a close up look at this. Moist, juicy, and delicious meatloaf, y'all. Hey, I guarantee you, y'all, if you never liked meatloaf before, trust the process, and I guarantee you, it'll change your opinion. Hey, we're going to go in for the taste test. Hey, when you take your meatloaf out the oven, allow it to rest at least 10, 15, at least 10 minutes, y'all, minimum. That way, when you begin to cut cutting process it don't crumble apart on you things of that nature you gotta allow those juices to get back in there and seal so allow it to rest a little bit that's on not just meat load that's on all meat y'all but get you a nice little blade we're gonna cut this thing up i'm just gonna cut me a, a small piece off I'm gonna be fancy. I'm gonna go and put it on this plate. Just for the heck of it. Just for the heck of it. But I want y'all to get a look at that. Look at the juices. Look at the tenderness of it, y'all. Come on. Hey, before I take this taste test, if you're new to my channel, hey, hit that subscribe button for me, y'all. Like this video, share this video, and let everybody know there's another channel out here, hey, 
We doing it. We highlighting all you two chefs that I follow and anybody that place cooking knowledge from my personal life. Hey, we demonstrating it and we putting it on a plate right before your very eyes, y'all. Now I got this little bit of sliver, I'ma call it, off my meatloaf because hey, this is for tomorrow. Hey, it's a meal that's gonna be served with uh, mashed potato, garlic and herb mashed potatoes and green bean and so. So with that said, let's go in for the taste test. I'm telling you y'all, just look at the moisture of it y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Man, hey, I'm not, I'm not playing with you man. Oh man, look at that. Come on, y'all. Mm. If you haven't did meatloaf with that boys in it, garlic and herb cheese in it, hey, this ain't nothing but a level up. This is a step up in your game right here, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. I am your man. Keep a cup can cook. Mm, mm, mm. And we got this moist, juicy, and delicious meatloaf. I'm about to get this covered up. Like I said, for tomorrow, we're gonna seal it in. Hey, and I'm out. <laughs> this is good, y'all. Bye.